issues. These are the early signs of a global liquidity crisis, which is different than a recession and different than a uh, called a plain vanilla you know financial crisis. The liquidity crisis, you know, is when you get ready to turn off the lights. There is a dollar shortage around the world, and people say, "How can that be?" You know, the Fed printed you know seven trillion dollars of money. You know, M zero actually higher than that. I think we're up to nine trillion. Um, they just flooded the zone with money, uh, and the answer is yes and no. The, yes, they did print you know over seven trillion dollars of base money, so called M zero, but that money didn't go anywhere. The Fed, how does the Fed print money? Well, they buy bonds from dealers, from the big banks, the so-called primary dealers. So the open market desk at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York calls up Goldman Sachs. They offer me tenure notes. Goldman says, here's a price. Okay, done. Goldman delivers the notes to the Treasury, or sorry, to the Fed, and the Fed pays Goldman. And that money comes out of thin air. That is money printing. But then Goldman takes the money and gives it back to the Fed as excess reserves. You know, it doesn't go into the real economy. Nobody borrows it. Nobody spends it. Nobody lends it. it, it all, all that happens is, at the Fed, you're building up both sides of the balance sheet. You're building up the asset side with U.S. Treasury securities, and you're building up the liability side with deposits from the primary dealers uh, in the form of excess reserves. So that money doesn't do anything. I mean, it, it's it's printed if you want to say that, but it it has not caused inflation. The inflation comes from, as it discussed earlier, from the supply side. Uh, the, you know the price of oil, supply chain disruptions, wheat, food, gasoline, etc. The inflation is flooding in, and it's exacerbated by fiscal policy. Now you have to what I just described about the money printing—that's monetary policy, okay? But fiscal policy, which is the five or six or probably seven trillion dollars of deficit spending, that's helicopter money. When the federal government, and the Congress, and the Treasury hand out checks. That's helicopter money. That's not like giving Goldman money and then Goldman gives it back to you. That forget that it doesn't do anything. I mean, it exists. It doesn't do anything. But when the government hands out checks, that's real. Now, people, some people saved them uh, during the pandemic. Uh, a lot of millennials opened accounts on Robinhood and started trading cryptos. Uh, they could, you know, kiss that money goodbye. Uh, but more recently, that money ha has been spent, and that's when the inflation really took off. So that was. Um, Driven not by monetary policy, it was driven by fiscal policy. Uh, but getting back to the strong dollar, um, there's this, there's something else going on, which is the entire international monetary system is driven not by the Fed, but by euro dollars, by money that banks lend to each other, so that they can support their balance sheets and lend to customers or um, offer uh, transactions to customers if they will. And the main transactions is approximately one quadrillion dollars of derivatives, options, futures, forwards, swaps, swaptions, you know, I could go on and on. All of that, almost all of it has to be backed up by collateral. I could say, uh, you know, if I'm a hedge fund and you're Morgan Stanley and I call you up and say, Addison, uh, I want a, you know, a $5 billion total return equity swap, which is basically a derivative basket of stocks and I can buy and sell stocks all day long, up to five billion, but it'll be notional. You'll pay me the profit or loss, the dividends, but I don't actually own the stocks. I just have a five billion dollar swap with you, and then you go out and maybe buy the stocks and hedge your position. You'll do that for me if I'm a big enough hedge fund or sovereign wealth fund or institution or whatever. But you want collateral. I don't have to give you five billion dollars worth of collateral. I just have to give you enough, a little bit of foundation, and the mark to market losses. So if I lose money on that deal. I will give you that much collateral. So collateral is the key to the whole quadrillion dollar structure I described. So what's good collateral? Well, it used to be a lot of things, but today uh, banks are saying to each other, um, "We don't want your corporates. We don't want your stupid mortgages. We want you know two-year treasury notes, maybe with a haircut, or six-month bills, four-week bills, thirty-day bills. The best, absolute best, most liquid form of collateral." Well, okay. First of all, there's a scarcity of that. There's a, there's a collateral shortage, and banks desperate to prop up their balance sheets are asking, "We're going to get some treasury bills," and they're bidding for them at prices that produce yields to maturity lower than what the Fed will give you for free. So, if I'm a bank and I can call the Fed, and the Fed will uh, give me some treasury bills, and I give them cash under an agreement to unwind that, and the interest rate on the cash is whatever. 
uh, why would I go out in the market and bid on a treasury bill that pays me less than what the Fed will give me for a phone call? Why would you do that? The answer is you need the bill. In other words, you don't need an expanded balance sheet. You don't need more credit at the Fed. You need that bill to pledge as collateral on this quadrillion dollars of derivatives. And that's what's happening. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. I have bad news for you. If you're not rich by now, you're screwed. And if you're in debt, you're even double screwed. How so, you might wonder. Well, the sad truth is that you're working your whole life to make someone else rich. The mega corporations, the banks, the politicians, everyone is getting richer. They get your money. And what is even worse, they get your time, they get your life. You are not even in a rat race, you're in a financial prison. But what could a solution for you look like? Honestly, I don't know, but I know what a solution for me would look like. It's very simple. I use whatever money I have and I multiply it with 1,000. This could make my life much easier and probably yours as well. If you have $1,000 available and multiply this with 1,000, I believe that this could solve some financial issue for the one or the other. Of course, if you're ugly, you would have to multiply it with much more than 1,000. My name is Marco Stan, and this is what I decided to do. I decided to 1,000x my money. This is not a joke. I know what you may be thinking. You know, what, what, what is this guy talking about? You, how should this work? This is not possible. Well, I made a detailed video where I laid out my plan. And some clever folks might even want to look at this plan and copy it and do exactly what I do. This is just a little hint on the side. You have two options. You leave. You forget what you have seen. You do whatever you're doing and you hope that somehow you get some other results. Good luck with that. Or you click the link below the video. You enter your email address because I'm not showing this to everybody. You at least watch my video on how I plan to 1000x my money. The choice is yours. Make the right choice. Join me. See what a different future you could have. See at least how I intend, how I plan to do the 1000x. So click on the link below, enter your email address, and I see you on the other side. Your Marcus Dan.